Amen. So we're, uh, we've been talking about, uh, obviously, heaven on earth. Uh, it's always been God's will. I mean, it was, uh, it was heaven on earth when um, Adam and Eve got started. However, uh, they made a decision that, uh, uh, that cost them and everyone since them uh, uh, quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of uh, hard labor. A lot of things that uh, transpired that didn't need to be transpired. But Jesus, but Jesus restored us to a place of authority Amen. and power so that regardless of who we were or where we were from, we could have an abundant life. Yes. We could be free from the bondage that uh, uh, mankind was thrust into by the transgression of Adam and Eve. So today we can have heaven on earth if you want it. Right. Now, if you don't want it, this might aggravate you this morning. But you know, uh, and I've said this over the years, um, I'm actually here to uh, comfort those who are disturbed, but disturb those who might be comfortable. And whether you realize it or not, it's real easy to become comfortable. Now, it's not as easy to choose life as it is some places, but I don't want it to be easy for you and I to be comfortable. Now, Jesus sent the comforter so that we could be comfortable as it pertains to the things we had to deal with, but they still must be dealt with. And the comforter was also also sent to lead and guide us and direct us, bring conviction to us so that we would make the changes necessary to be successful in this life. You, can, you cannot have heaven on earth if you're still living like hell. Yes. That's right. That's right. You cannot embrace hellish behavior yeah. and expect to have anything that even looks like heaven on earth. Because just the moment you think you're doing well, when you're living like hell, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Right. No way to escape it. That's the wages that sin pays. So if we want heaven on earth, then we have to do what heaven says is necessary for that to transpire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what time it was. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't real early in the morning, but uh, uh, the Spirit of God, and uh, I always know it's Him because He immediately wants me to reach for my device and write something down. And so I am, I'm glad of the de- devices for that particular reason. I don't have to fumble around. I don't have to get up, go look for a pen, paper, and all that. I can just write it down. And I'll, ha- I'll expound on this. But in essence, here's what he said. You know, the church is a spiritual house. We don't do things like the world does. As a matter of fact, the world doesn't even, doesn't even understand why we come. And there are many Christians that don't understand how come we come as often as we do come. Because they don't realize that the Word of God is life to those that find it. And health and healing and medicine to all their flesh. They just think that's a metaphor. No, that's the truth. That's the truth. Hallelujah. Here's what he spoke to me. He said, if you profess... To be a Christian, but see your ethnicity as an asset or a liability. You either don't know or don't believe the Word of God. Let me say it again. If you profess to be a Christian, how many of you know a lot of people profess? I mean, like, like I think, you know, they say like 70 or 80 percent of, of our nation are Christians. Really? Really? Well, where is that standard? Where is that bar? 
I mean, I know one thing for sure. It's so low, you could never limbo under it. Is that what you do? Lim- what do you, is it limbo? What do you, is that the right word? I mean, I never could do that. I, have, I, I always had too much bow to limb under, you know? I, I was, and so I, my stuff didn't bend like that. And then it, it would all kind of roll up in one area. You know what I'm saying? We'll see if we can keep you laughing part of the time. If you profess to be a Christian, but you see your ethnicity as either an asset or a liability, you either don't know or don't believe the Word of God. Oh, I'm going to, babe. I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to because it's imperative for our assignment in Hobbs, New Mexico. Huh? And however far it can influence and help people. There are just not that many people that I know of who will address issues that need to be addressed in order for people to have the life that Jesus paid for. And I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ because it and only it empowers us to have victory in this life. So we're going to look at some verses and we're going to talk, talk about some things. So, you know, how many of you know, I don't know what it's like to be a Mexicano. I don't know what it's like to be a Mexicano. I don't know what it's like to be a black. I don't know what it's like to be Asian. I don't, I don't know what it's like to be a, an American Indian. I don't know what it's like to be a Russian, a Muslim, a Buddhist. I don't have any idea what that's like. Now, some of you know what it's like to be a black or a Mexicano. Hmm? Maybe we've got an American Indian in the crowd. Maybe we've got a, a few that are a compilation of those different ethnicities. But the moment you see your ethnicity as an asset or a liability, you're showing off your ignorance. If you're a child of God. I said, if you're a child of God. If you're a child of God. If you are a true believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And you still have an issue with your ethnicity. Or think for a moment that its advantages or disadvantages are not working for you, then you must not know the word of God or you must not be a child of God. I mean, we still sit divided today for the most part in what is called the body of Christ into different church organizations because of color. Is that not right? Because of, strictly because of color. Strictly because of color. Now, I don't know if it was because I started late, because I'd been around a lot of different people as I grew up and had no issues with any of them and don't remember any of them really having any serious issues with me. But I think we need to understand how important it is. And this is really, this is really, this is really specific to you, where you are. Now, some of you, you may not even think anything about what I'm saying. But I believe you will before we're finished. Because we sit divided as a church universal, not over what we should be divided with, but race 
and ethnicity. I mean, if I'm going to be divided from somebody, it's going to be because of the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can assure you, if I lived in L.A. when Kathy and I got married, huh? you'd have found my white bottom at Dr. Frederick Casey Price's church listening to the message of faith like at that time it was presented by nobody other than maybe Kenneth E. Hagin who mentored him. The word of God should be the thing that draws you, keeps you, and grows you up to be the man or woman of God that you've been called to be. Not your affinity to your people group, regardless of who they are or what they think. First Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12:14. 12, Twelve thirteen, excuse me. Twelve thirteen. For by one spirit are we all baptized unto one body. That's not talking about water baptism. That's talking about the new birth experience. When you and I are born again, the Holy Ghost baptizes us into the body of Christ. We become a new creation. Whether we be Jews, Gentiles, whether we be bond, slaves, whatever, employees, whether we be bond or free and have been all made to drink into one spirit. All of us becomes one of us. All of us becomes one of us in him. You know, I don't know where some of the organizations came from. Oh, I do too. I do too. They're, they were birthed in hell. The Masonic people, of which one mainline denomination almost fills that particular organization. I don't think we've yet plumbed the depths of its demonic sources. Or the Knights of Columbus. Where the hell is that in here? Where, where is that? The Knights of Columbus. I need Reverend Roy's Church of the Subconscious, I think, to find that. How about the NAACP? Maybe it ought to be the NAACP. National Association for the Advancement of Christian Colored People. Honestly, we don't need that either. We don't need that. You're all looking at me kind of touchy here. No, you're not, I know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where did those come from? Hell. That's where they all came from. Anything, anything that promotes division yes. Yes. as opposed to provision yes. is hellish in its origin. Yes. That's right. yes. Okay? So we're not embarrassed to talk about that, are we, huh? Masons. I remember as a young man, uh, my dad was a Mason. I know, huh? I mean, I believe, he, I believe he was a Christian. I do believe that. 
I believe he was. I believe he was born again. But how many of you know you can get deceived? Yeah. Right. And you can find yourself involved in things for different reasons right. hmm? that are absolutely demonic. Right. Hmm? Right. Absolutely demonic. And very subtly. But uh, at that particular time, and, and I'm sure they, they, they still do, I think a lot, of those, a lot of those organizations are probably not as uh, uh, prevalent or as big as they once were. But they had a, a, a young man's uh, thing, demolay is what they call it. The demolay. Has anybody ever heard of that? That's what happens when you've got a really young crowd. <laughs> Has anybody ever heard of the Masons? Yes. Huh? Yes. You know. So the Demolay is their little guy deal, huh? I went to two of those meetings. My dad was climbing the, uh, the, the degree ladder of that deal, you know, and, and I went to a couple of those. I said, nah, I'm not going back to that anymore. <laughs> what, what are we being so quiet about? And what, why are we hiding? And yeah. why, are we not, why are we not divulging what we're doing? And, and why does the symbol have a G in the center of a compass? And, and here I thought the G was for God and for ge- geometry. I mean, sure enough, that's grounds to not go there. (laughs) For by one spirit, speaking about believers, or those who have received the Lord Jesus. Now listen, don't get after me now, because the Masons buy a lot of, uh, send a lot of little kids to hospitals, and buy them glasses and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Huh? Surely. <laughs> Let me get another verse here. I, I need to get something out of the. I need to get something out of the Bible for you here. Oh yeah, Second Corinthians five seventeen. I can just bring that out of my, out of my heart. Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man or woman, you know, that's the only two there are. Huh? You're either a man or a woman. It's a plumbing deal. It's a plumbing deal. It has nothing to do with your frogging mentality. It has nothing to do if somebody rubbed on you wrong as a child. It has everything to do what you're born with. It's just the way it is. God made this simple. Huh? That's why Adam was able to say when God brought Eve over to him, he was able to say, hubba, hubba, hubba. Woo, he said, now this, this right here. This right here is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. I believe this is fitting. This is showing up fitting. Second Corinthians five seventeen, For if any man or woman... Be in Christ Jesus. They are a new creature, a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. A new creature. You were never around before, and you fit in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, come on now. Some of you are gonna go to another stinking level. Some of you are gonna turn your back on all the nonsense and you're gonna grab the word of God like it actually is the word of God and he's gonna change your life. He's going to change your life. And I believe before we leave this morning, you're going to see if you have some issues along this line and you're going to leave them here. And we're going to sweep them out of here before the people come for second service. Second Corinthians 5, 17. If any man or any woman be in Christ Jesus, they're a new creature, a new creation, Old things are passed away. Your blackness is history. Huh? Your brownness is history. Your whiteness is worthless. Your Buddhism sucks. All of those things mean nothing if you're in Christ Jesus. 
They are neither an asset nor a liability. They are a non-entity. They mean nothing to God and should mean nothing to you and I. None of those things should be used or for us to think they can be used to advance our cause and our purpose in this life. Not for a moment. Not for a moment are they designed to be an asset to what is finished. To what is finished. Galatians 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What would it be like if you didn't have to be uncomfortable around your friends for going to choose life? What would it be like for them not to rag on you because you come listening to some cracker every Sunday? Huh? You know, you ought to tell them, you know, I'll be listening to that cracker. (laughs) Because he obviously knows the truth about God's word and he's not ashamed to live it to the very best of his ability. And he loves me enough that he ain't gonna pet on my brownness or my blackness or my whiteness or my yellowness, huh? or my redness. For as many of you, verse 27, did I say that? Galatians 3. We'll start at 26. For you are all, and this is where a lot of people get messed up. For you are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. They forget that by faith in Christ. Well, you know, we're all the children of God. We're all the children of God. Oh, that's so freaking beautiful. (laughs) Just makes me want to ball. Surely. Well, you know, we're all the children of God. You know, we're, we're all God's children. Really? You are gobbled up. We're children of God if we have sincerely believed in our heart and confessed with our mouth the Lord Jesus and have stepped into the kingdom and are beginning to focus on him. For as many, for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ, same, same thing we just read about, have put on Christ. You put on Christ. You you haven't put on Dr. Martin Luther King. Huh? I mean, I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to think of a famous Mexican. Is there a famous Mexican I can mention? Huh? Not a good one. (laughs) How about... uh, how about, uh, uh, how about a couple of those reverends there? What's, what are those guys' names? Come on, somebody help me. Somebody help me. Somebody help me. Come on. Come on, help me. What's his name? Who? What are you? Are you embarrassed to mention the guy's name? What is it? The guy's name, one of them was, uh, I mean, these guys are, Lord have mercy. They're, 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 they're every bit as bad as all the white guys I can mention. Mother Teresa. We're not sure about Mother Teresa either now. Mother Teresa's got a history, by the way. I mean, she made some good quotes, but we don't know about really how it was, you know. Who are some of those guys? Uh, Come on. What do you mean you don't know? You don't know. So just keep going. Is that what you're saying? Can I get no help from this group? Is this the wrong group today for crying out loud? Second service, I can get them there a little bit. What? <laughs> Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa was probably a full-blown heathen, and we really, we really can't hold anything against him. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm talking about those who declare to be. Come on. This is really... I mean, I'm thinking about two guys in particular. Maybe, maybe I, I, I'm not supposed to mention them, and that's why, you know, I, they're not coming up on my registry. Sholy. Sholy. And I'm not talking about Sholy goodness and mercy either. <laughs> there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither there, bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Huh? It's like we're all put in a blender. It's like we're all put in a blender. Well, you know, I mean, uh, I just, I'm really proud of my uniqueness. What? Your uniqueness? <laughs> what is unique about you? Well, you know, I think I'm pretty special. Really? Right, who gave you that idea? Has your mom been lying to you all those years? <laughs> Sweetheart, you're so special. It's like we go into a blender. Oh, my goodness. And if you be Christ's, listen to this dude you're hooked up with. Then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the whole blend, the whole blend, and I don't know what color that comes out. I guess maybe it depends on the proportion or the darkness of the proportion or whatever it is. Huh? You know, I am so stinking excited that even though I did come from high privilege. But how dumb is that? What the flip did I have to do with that? Why in the world, especially in the church, would we allow something we had not a stinking thing to do with divide us and make us feel as if in his eyes we are not all the same? Because when we're in him, we're Abraham's seed. And every one of us are heirs. And regardless of where we came from, who we came from, if we even know them, we are now a new creation. And we're, we're the seed of Abraham. And the Lord Jesus and what he paid for belongs to every one of us. Why would we entertain? Why would we invest money, time in organizations and not pay attention to the Word of God? Why would you let your whatever colorness separate you? And you know what? Nothing can separate you from His love but you can sure separate your love from him by not letting him be the apple of your eye. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at some more verses. I can sense a crescendo on the way in your excitement. Galatians 6, 15 For in Christ Jesus, is there anybody in here that's in Christ Jesus? I mean, you know it. I, 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 you know it. You know you're a child of God. You have no reservations about your reservations. Now, many hands aren't up. I'll give you an opportunity later. You need to make this the day that you separate yourself from whoever you think you are and become who he actually wants you to be. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature, a new creation. That's the only thing that you and I need to be successful. Ephesians 
Ephesians 6, verse 8. Now, I know Paul is the one that's uh, given, given us uh, this information, but he's given us this information because he had the revelation. He had the revelation of this. This was given to him by revelation. Ephesians 6, 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man does, the same shall, shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. Whatever good thing a man does, he'll be rewarded for it whether he's bond or free, whether he's an employee or an employer, huh? whether, whether he's a slave or he's a free man, he'll receive the very same. He'll receive the very same. I don't care who you are, where you're from, when you're in him, you do not have to be held back. You do not have to expect some second-class outcome for your life. Unless you'd rather carry that card. Unless you'd rather see yourself huh, as one whose heritage was from Mexico or wherever. Those things mean nothing. God sees no borders at all. All he sees are those who have received him and then he gives them an equal opportunity to live an abundant life. Hallelujah. 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 Who would want to stay? Well, I'll tell you the only people that stay under that stuff I know it's already. You'd have to be lost. You'd have to be lost to stay under a system that man set up as opposed to God's system. Do we not serve the God who is no respecter of persons? So then why in the world would we have to look for alternatives to make our way or to be received or to be treated fairly? Listen, listen, you come to a house like this, you fall in love with the master of this house and you're going to be treated so fairly, you're going to wonder what took you so long to get here. Because when you find out who you are in him, You don't care whose offspring you are. You know that you've been grafted into the body of Christ. You've become a new creation with the same benefits as everyone in the body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians 3. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, 10 through 11. This is, this is interesting here. And have put on, that doesn't mean you're acting, you have put on the new man. Say, I put on the new man which includes you if you're a woman. I put on the new man or the new woman, which is renewed, renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, Barbarian, which was a lot of you, that's what you were. You were barbaric people, Lord have mercy. I mean, I read about it one day. I thought, golly, there's, oh my God, they were barbaric. Or Scythian. You know what a Scythian is? 
Russian. Isn't that interesting? We even got the Russians in here. The Russians are coming. You know, they will be coming one of these days. They'll be coming around the mountain. They'll be coming around the mountain when they come. They'll be coming around the mountain when they come. They'll be coming around the mountain. They'll be coming around. They'll be coming around the mountain. And they'll be heading down. And they'll pick up the Iranians. Ooh. And then they're going to head on down to Israel. And they're going to find themselves in the valley. And then pretty soon the only thing that will be found in the valley is their blood. Which will be neck deep to a tall horse. That's lots of blood. And they will find out that there is a God. That there is a God. Hallelujah. Boy, that was, that was some heavy clapping right there. Y'all okay? <laughs> Are your palms red? Hey, listen, let me just be honest with you. If, if you're going to clap, don't clap like that, okay? <laughs> you know, clap like you're a, a, a Buccaneer fan. Huh? Or a cowboy fan. <laughs> See, that's what I mean. You'd be jumping up. Wife's got her pom-poms, huh? You got your BL. Where there's either Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ in all, is all and in all. Is all and... And in all, why is it that people who say they're born again believers have so much trouble deferring to the only one that matters? Why is it, why is it that our, our groups and organizations and denominations and gathering places, he's one of the last ones mentioned. And really not much said about us being one as they are one. Is it because we're still too enamored with our uniqueness and our being so special that we can't see that the only thing that unifies us is the word of the living God? Matter of fact, if we're not in unity with this, do you suppose? Possible. Maybe that individual's not connected. Maybe they have made mental assent to a group or an organization or denomination or a dogma or a theology. Huh? or a cool place to go, but they haven't connected with the only one that can change them and bring them into a place where they can be one with others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see this house filled with a greater mix and representation of men and women who are believers than any house in our territory. I see barriers being supernaturally broken down where people get sick and tired of being sick and tired, lied to and used in order to cause division instead of provision, which is what God wants. I declare that everyone who doesn't honor this word correctly as a man or woman of God, will find themselves looking for an audience instead of continuing to build on fabricated truths 
that have in, in, in reality kept people bound for generations, for generations, for generations, men and women of every color have been held bound by the lies of the enemy. He stuck them in churches. He's lied to them. He's cheated them. Yeah. He's good. Hallelujah. Here, let me beat on your wife. Let me just go. Isn't that what's happened? Isn't that what's happened? We sit around, talk our stuff. Hmm? All our stuff. People dying by the numbers. People living totally out of totally out of uh, uh, out of sync from God's plan, never enjoying really any peace in their life, sitting there getting lied to week after week, after week after week, huh? We go in there and we cry, we genuinely like, mm, hell, Mary, going to grace, I want to be with thee. Don't mean nothing. Mary is not the hero. Mary is not the champion. The Lord Jesus is the champion. He is the champion. There is no other name under heaven where man might be saved than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one else gets his place. No one else gets his place. And if you don't give him that space in your place, then you'll never have the freedom that he's paid for you to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. No other name. Acts 4.12 says it. There is no other name. It's time we're not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not mad at people that are wrong. They got a perfect right to be wrong. But I would be wrong if I didn't testify how this is supposed to look. Hallelujah. Acts 4.12. Huh? Acts 4.12. There is no other name under heaven. Hmm? Columbus. Mary. Hail Mary. Hail Mary. (laughs) Come on, Mary. Hail Mary. (laughs) See, do you think Mary was trying to elevate herself? Where'd that come from? Where did that come from? Man's stuff. I'll tell you where it comes from. It comes from man's unwillingness not to bow to the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to bow to what the word of God says. Not to change and conform to Jesus. So we're going to find us someone else, something else, some other dynamic we can follow that's palatable for people. And then we'll trick them by the freaking millions, which is what that church has done. And I use the word church very, very loosely and has probably 2 billion people in its ranks who they have robbed, they have pillaged, they have stolen from, they have lied to. But we can see how important it is to brainwash people, can't we? Because that's just what happens. That's just what happens. They begin to believe a lie. And you couldn't take it away from them if you tried. Why aren't we going to be truthful about this? Why aren't we going to be truthful? We see politicians who that's their, that's their out, huh? Yeah, I'm a Catholic, huh? Well, you abortion believing, huh? Absolutely stealing, murdering, huh? And they're of all colors too, by the way. They're of all colors, huh? Standing up for an organization. It's time we pick our side. It's time we pick our side. 
Some, you know, you can tell them, you know, I won't be sending my yearly, uh, uh, my yearly uh, uh, fee for my being part of that organization. I'm going to start honoring God. I'm going to get in his family. I'm going to start honoring the one who died for me. Not the one that's trying to kill me and my family with the lies softly and pretending to be on my side. No, no. That's the one thing that Sinatra said that we could say, we're going to do it our way which is his way. We're not going to choose man's way. Hallelujah. Praise God. This could be our last day on YouTube. I know one thing for sure. The Cardinals, that's a baseball team, isn't it? No, the Cardinals and the bishops and the other high folk They're not going to be happy. But you know what? I'm not happy that there's a real good possibility that a huge percentage of their followers are not the children of God. And they've been lied into believing that we can light a candle. Well, fix this. And even though you were that chief hellion, and we know he's passed, but there's still a chance. No, there's no chance. There's no chance. You either are or you aren't before you take that last breath. We couldn't pray you out of the bar before you died. We can't pray you out of hell since you died. It's time to stop playing. And that begins with each of us. Hmm? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad God woke me up early? Let's all bow our heads. 